We popped it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back of his teardown lab. Do you recognize this? Of course you do. It's that amazing clock, my large, large clock. And the problem with this clock is it doesn't work. And a lot of you have suggested reasons as to why it doesn't work. Um, I have to admit, I've not done any of those yet, by the way. I'm saving that for a future video with all my failed things. And we'll go through the, the failures and try to resurrect them. But if you recall, one of the main features about this kit is that it contains an awful lot of surface mount components that I hand soldered. Uh, I didn't use just soldering iron, I did the hot air technique and some of you on Twitter have commented, yeah that works, you've tried that and you've managed to get this clock working and I haven't. So what I've got behind me um, buzzing away is a tool that's designed to help uh, do this and if you're doing it in a commercial uh, context you'd be using one and that's it right there and that's an infrared PCB heater. Uh, I'll zoom in later so you can see it in operation but you've got a graph here and that shows the profile it's going to take. So you've got 0 to 8 minutes as the standard program and 0 to 300 degrees C. So it's got a tray that you basically put your workpiece in there and what you'll have done is use some solder paste and popped all the components down using solder paste and that will sit right there, shut the drawer, and then you just set the program and off it goes. And the idea is that, ow, 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 ow. it's very hot by the way, I have had it on. Um, and the idea is because it uh, heats the PCB up at the sort of right rate, if you remember, if you look at the uh, data sheet for these components, they'll tell you um, how hot they should be at any any moment in time during the process. It heats them up uh, according to the standard in those data sheets for the sort of most solder profiles and then allows them to cool down at a certain rate that just doesn't allow stresses and fractures to come into the board. So it's, it's almost annealing the board as it goes along. And um, that's sort of used when you sort of see people on eBay uh, repairing Xboxes and putting Nvidia chips back on. All they're normally doing is just dismantling the PCB and throwing it in one of those. So we're going to uh, reflow this board basically because it doesn't work. And hopefully, hopefully it's going to work out. Um, I'm just going to test it once though. I'm not. This isn't a, bo uh, a video on how to fix this board. This is just me uh trying out just a quick go basically to see if if reflowing that does anything we'll try before and after so based on the sort of majority of the components on your screen you can choose the different profiles here so you, you just go through them basically by pressing f1 and f2 so just show you those so at the moment we've got wave one which is pretty much standard profile there and you can see oh i just jumped straight through them wave two see a slightly different curve you might not really appreciate that there's too much difference in these but it depends on what you're trying to do look at that there that's that's one a nice cool one only going up to 150 and then steep cool down on most of these if not all of them up to 250 and then look at the timeline here none really exceed the sort of seven eight minute mark so we're just going to go though with standard wave one for this there's our circuit board so you just open your drawer your pizza drawer and you pop in your board and remember it only heats from the top so don't worry too much about all your components falling off from the bottom and it's probably better if you can though to support your workpiece evenly in there which I'm not going to do I'm just going to throw it in like that though we'll just shut the door and we just hit the uh, start button hooray that's really nice and simple so you'll see that the actual lamp goes on and also you can see obviously that I don't operate this machine very much. Um, there's a fan in here to keep the electronics cool but I think it might have internal fans as well to actually keep the um, you know, temperature regulated in there. And after a while we'll see that that drawer starts to glow rather red. Just that whole thing is... that sounds like... Oh wow, it's really... Ah! I may have an issue here. Ah, <laughs> that's done nicely. That's absolutely ready. <laughs> we popped it. <laughs> Learn how to use one of these properly. <laughs> and that's the reason why I'm not allowed to use these tools. Jared, I like the pose. I think you Aww. should you should be using these going forward. <laughs> the hacks. That's well bad. It's like you let all the smoke out in one single go. Uh, look, 
<laughs> What's that? A lonely a electrolytic. That's probably what went pop. Oh, wow. It's really... <laughs> That's hot. What's your hand on the door? It's messed up big time. Oh, no, all the components <laughs> fell off. <laughs> Look at the LCD panel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's still soft. I'm trying to just turn this around. Do you think you're going to get it working now? Do you think that fixed it? I like the fact that I spent like a million years putting this together as well, by hand. Yeah. And uh, now, look, all the parts have just, are just literally falling off. Um, oh, just, that smell. Look at this though, it's still, it's still very much molten because you can just move the now, surface That's interesting, mount. the outer ring of the PCB is now at around 100 degrees, but the inner is still above 150. This goes to show you though, like just how evenly it does heat the board, because you see the components can be easily moved around still. Um, it's amazing. It, it just, with the right settings, and in somebody else's hands probably, um, you can achieve wondrous things. Um, and I'm kind of embarrassed a little bit to say that I've had this piece of equipment for quite a long time and still never really uh, used it. So there, that's why I don't use it. Amazing. So I'm not really sure. Now I've got to go through the manual to see why this uh, cocked up though. It probably is because you've really got to sort of just check what components you're one able to use on there and two, how to set that maximum temperature. Because remember there was a profile in there that showed it a lot cooler. I suspect that would work for this type of gadget. the caps have the temperating on them. Amazing. There, hope that's been of some use to you. Uh, go buy your T962A PCB destroyer. Slash sandwich maker. Slash sandwich maker. It's better at making sandwiches and pizzas. Thanks for watching.